Okay, hello guys. So today we're going to do this uh, weekly contest 244 from Neat Code. Mm. Yeah, so it's I think 8:40 right now. I couldn't wake up at 8 a.m. Who wakes up at 8 a.m.? Yeah, so we still have 46 minutes left. I think that should be enough. So let's register. Okay. How to see where the problems are? Uh, are these the problems? Okay, many people have already done everything. Okay. Uh, 14 minutes now. Okay. Determine whether matrix can be found by rotation. Okay. okay. So we can rotate it only once. No, we can rotate it any number of times. Okay, so we need to know, uh, we need to have a function, uh, we need to have a way to check whether they are equal and we need to have to uh, know how to rotate them. Okay, so rotation is like that. And uh, we have an n cross n matrix, right? Okay. Right, so we need to know a way to rotate it. And uh, we don't have to rotate it more than four times. Okay. This means how many times we will rotate, and after rotating, we will actually check if they are equal or not. So if we are out of this loop, then we return false. And if within this loop we can find an equal, we will return true. I think we can just say if matrix equals to target, then we can return true. Okay. But now what we want to do is we want to actually rotate the matrix. Okay. Right, so we need to need, uh, we need a way to actually rotate the matrix. So it is something like uh, if we have this matrix, right? So this should become something like wait a second. I think rotation would be like this, right? So it will be like G, D, A, B, C, F, I, and uh, H, G, and uh, E will stay there. Okay, so like this first row becomes the last column and so on. Okay, so Okay, so this first row has to be the last column and so on. So I think we need another vector. Okay, um, I'll call it temp and after this I will say mat equals to temp. Okay. Now here when I am on the first matrix, uh, first row I have to be on the last column, okay. So let's say C equals N minus 1 minus row, okay. So I am in the last column of the other matrix and now I want to iterate on the column of this and the row of this. Okay, I think uh, that should remain the same. And now uh, all we have to do is we have to set something like temp 
R C equals mat row call. Right, and for this we need to have the actual size. So maybe we can just say uh, M equals mat so that they they will have the correct size. So this is this I'm doing just to put the right size. Mm, making it n cross n. Obviously, there is an another way to make it n cross n by making like n comma v i n. So obviously that will also work. But yeah, so I think this should work. Mm. What? Oh, uh, row plus plus. What? Okay, sorry, return true. I think I'm still sleepy today. Um, is this correct? Okay. Okay, accepted. Right, so we got the first one. Reduction operations to make the array elements equal. Okay, so we have we are given a array nums. That's the only input that we have. Then okay, so there are some operations. I guess we want to return the number of operations to make it. Uh, make all the elements equal. Okay. Is it like the minimum number of operations or just the number of operations? Maybe that will be the same. Uh, let's read the operations. Find the largest number. Let it. Let its index uh, be this thing and its value be largest. Mm -hmm. Okay, smallest element index and the largest element value. Okay, so we're breaking ties, breaking ties by taking the smallest index. Return. Okay, find the next largest value strictly smaller than largest. Okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. Right. So I think it's just that. It is. I think. I think it's simple. It's just that. Hmm. Right. So we have an array like this: five, four, six, two, uh, three, two, six, three, something like this. So we will first find the first element with the largest value. And reduce it to the second largest. I think second largest is this. So we put five here. This will become five. Then this will also become five, and so on. Right. So I think all the six will first of all become five. Then all the five will become four. Then all the four will become three, and so on. So we just need to count the frequency of all the in that way if we work right uh, 5 into 10 to power 4 okay okay now I think mm -hmm. right oh sorry yeah, so now I think uh, we just need to uh, count the frequency of everything. Okay, so let's just iterate on the numbers and yeah, let's just count the frequency. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to make this count. Uh, I think there should be a map that would be better. Okay, so uh, like whatever the count of the biggest element is, we have to put it into the next smaller element, I think. Okay. Mm. 
so we should start from the biggest okay uh, we will have to iterate in the reverse order on this uh, okay right so i think first of all we can uh, make a list of everything that is present in this okay Okay, so I'm storing the unique values here. Okay, the count. Let's just say then reverse values dot begin values end okay so i have all the unique values in reverse order okay now what i want to do is i want to iterate on this like this for uh int x in the values okay now what i'm what i'm doing is i have the biggest element right now so like uh, i need an i need some answer that i will get in okay like this okay yeah so i have some answer that i will return and uh, how do i increase that so uh, okay so if this is like the smallest element uh, then we don't do anything right right so if x equals or i think we can just remove the last element from here so what is like values dot pop back okay because like uh, when they are all equal to 2 then we don't do anything but apart from that like if both are equal to 6 we make them uh, both equal to five, then all the fives become four, and then all, all the fours become three, and so on. Okay, so this will be like answer plus equals count of x because, like, if there are two six, we add two to the answer, then count of uh, okay, uh, wait a second. Uh, let's have a total thing total equals zero total plus equals count of x and answer plus equals total right so if we have found uh, six and five both so we have three things and we have to add all three to the answer okay. is this correct i think it's correct okay accepted we got two of these how much time is it 33 minutes yeah i think we can get them okay minimum number of clips to make the binary string alternating yeah so we need to do the minimum number of clips to make the binary string alternating let's see what this means um, hmm. Remove the character at the start and append it to the end. Okay. And pick any character and flip its value. So we want to make it alternating and we call it alternating, alternating if no two adjacent characters are equal. Okay. Okay. It's this uh, with small constraints because I don't want to, again, okay, no, not small constraints. Hmm, right, so something like mm, let me see something like one 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 zero zero zero. One thing we can do is we can just take this thing and put it here, or take this thing, put it here, something like this. There's one operation. The, the, the other operation is obviously flip the characters like this. 
Yeah, these two operations we have. And I'm thinking, when will this append operation actually help us? I'm thinking if we have some odd kind of thing. Uh, okay. All right, yeah, it can always help. So one solution that I can think of is that uh, we can actually make some cyclic cyclic shifts of this, like this thing, and we put it again here. And then we have a cyclic shift. So let's say if we want to do this second op first operation two times, then our string will be like this. Like these two characters went to the back of this. If we do it four times, then our string will look like this, and so on. So in each of them, we have to check how many references are there with this string, I think, or with this string. Right. And a similar problem came up in, I think, day before yesterday's code forces contest. It was round 724, uh, in educational round 110 the C problem. So it was also something like this we had to make the string alternating. And one thing that we found out there was uh, in an alternating string, the parity of index mod the element at that position is same everywhere. So if we can find that thing or let's say if we just, uh, sorry not mod, uh, this is or Right, so this is same everywhere. So what I want to say is like if we have this thing and we zor it with the parity of index, parity means whether the index is odd or even. So if we zor it with this thing, so this whole thing becomes one 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 one. And if we zor these two, this whole thing becomes zero 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 zero. Like this. So what I think we should do is we should first of all uh yeah, so we should we should first of all zor it with this thing. Right, and then whatever we get, we just want to uh, make it equal instead of uh, making it alternating. So then I think we will just count the number of uh, uh, like in this we will just count the number of zeros and ones present in a certain interval, and uh, like. Whichever one is greater, that one we will take and the other one we will convert it to the first one. So something like after taking this ZOR, after taking this ZOR, let's say our string looks like, I mean it will look like this. 10101, one, zero, one, zero, one. Mm, okay 0 I think, right. And then 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, something like this it will look. So uh, let's say if we want an interval like this, um, yeah. So if we want this interval, I think uh, like these four we can keep the same, and these two we have to change. So if we want to change these two, then like the answer is just two. So I think yeah, so that's what we want. Okay, cool. I think that's it. So we have a string. Uh, let's say the size of the string is dot size. Let's make a vector of double size. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to put the string in here two times, but uh, uh, we want to zor it with the uh, parity. Let's make this 2n and then we want to put it 2n times. Now, if uh, uh, int j equals i mod n, so this represents the pointer in the first string. After it ends, we have to start from the beginning. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to push into the string, or let's say just vi equals uh, index mod 2, i uh, mod 2, zor the element that we have here so this is like sj minus 0 okay 
Now what we want to do is we want to take a window of this of length n and we need to count the number of uh, zeros and ones that are present in this window. So I think that should be simple just uh, first just count the zeros and ones in the something like count uh, let's say vector okay so we have uh, count okay and we want to count the number of zeros and ones in a range of n i think count of vi plus plus okay so we already know the count at this point uh, the count at this point and uh, we can kind of move it like a two pointer thing so like if we have a pointer here we have a pointer here and we're doing that okay, something like l equals uh, zero i think and r equals n right so l is inclusive and r is exclusive so what we want to do is we want to remove l and we have to uh, include r something like while r is uh, smaller than 2n i think yeah because we can never include 2n right so while r is smaller than 2n what we want to do is we want to exclude this l and we want to include the r okay so how do we do that count of vl minus minus and l plus plus okay count of vr plus plus and r plus plus okay so in this way we have updated the counts and what we want to do is we we need we need an answer right we want to minimize the answer i think Okay. Uh, no, this should be like something very big. Let's say this is like n because obviously we can do it in n moves and we just want to minimize it. So return n at the end. Return the answer at the end. And how do we check the answer here? So we want to see the number of. Uh, uh, cyclic shift that we have done the number of type 1 moves so that is just equal to l because uh, each time we increase that obviously we are doing one cyclic move so like the temporary answer will be like obviously l plus uh, we want to add the uh, number of changes that we have done right so it will be like n minus the maximum of count 0 and count 1 Right, so uh, why? Because as I said, so if we have four ones here and only two zeros here, so what we will do is we will change this uh, two zeros to ones. So it's like two. Uh, wait a second. Yeah. So six minus four. Yes, I think that's how the temp will work. And answer should be the minimum of temp commands or answer comma temp. I think this is all right to work according to me. Answer is two. Okay, answer is two. Let's submit it. Oh, long answer. Uh, wow. What? Okay, maybe some cyclic shift is really good here. We are doing those, right? Uh, mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Wow, okay. Yeah. 
Oh, minimum number of type two operations. Okay. Okay, I didn't read that. So I think we just have to remove this because type one operations we can do for free. Right. Accepted. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So the problem here was I thought that we have to minimize the number of operations, but we had to just minimize the number of type two operations. So these were free. And I was what I was doing is I was adding these operations as well. So I was doing something like L plus this thing that was causing the problem. And without this, it was working. Right. Obviously, there are other ways to do this as well. Uh, I just thought uh, this would be the easiest. How much time is left? Okay, twenty-one minutes. I think I can do this. Is my mic on? Uh, hello, hello. Okay. You have n packages that you are trying to place in boxes. One package in each box. M supplies that produce boxes with different uh, different size. Package can be placed in a box if the size of the package is less than or equal to. Yeah, obviously. Um, wait a minute. What should I put? Packages in boxes. Okay, so we know the size of the packages. And oh, 2D array. What is what is it storing? Oh, okay. Okay, so a single supplier supplies multiple boxes, okay, multiple size of boxes, and everything is infinite. Okay, and we want to choose only a single supplier, so that the total wasted space is minimized. What are the constraints here? Okay, everything is ten to power five. Even the sum of this is ten to power five. Okay. Elements in boxes J are distinct. Yeah. Okay. okay, and wasted spaces. Okay, I think we have to find the wasted space for one supplier, and then scale that up. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. So that that will be. That will be that will be bad, I think. Uh, for one supplier, I think it's easy to find the total wasted space. What we can do is we can keep the vector of the uh, supplier in a sorted order, like this, maybe something like this. And then we have the boxes, like one, three, seven, eight, something like this. Uh, this doesn't even need to be sorted. And what we just want to do is we want to find the uh, lower bound of this in this array. So yeah, this is the same. Nothing wasted here. We find the lower bound. It is too bigger, so obviously too too wasted here. Nothing wasted and one wasted here. So yeah, so three would be the answer. So this this is easy, but we have to do it for all the suppliers and all the. Okay, yeah. So we have to do it for all the suppliers and all the boxes, and since their product can be a lot, so we could do something like n m log n, and that is no, that is bad. So that is no, that will cause us really. So we need to do all this quickly. Yeah, so this thing we want to do quickly. Okay, so I am thinking of something like square root decomposition. I think. So it is something like. Um, hmm. So I mean, if we have a lot of uh, these things, uh, what are these? Yeah. So if we have a lot of suppliers. So if we have a lot of suppliers. A bit of thing. If we have less suppliers, then obviously this thing will work. We can do this. Right. So if we have less suppliers, then obviously this will work because 
obviously this is just nm login so obviously it would work for less suppliers but if we have a lot of suppliers then what will happen is uh, the number of elements in a single uh, present in a single supplier would be a lot so maybe then that we, maybe then we can do something with that maybe, maybe then we can do something that works so let's say if we have only two elements per supplier or something like that uh, like not a lot of elements per supplier and n is a lot what can we do uh, like instead of iterating on n what i want to do is i want to iterate on this m i want to iterate on this instead right so i think what we can do is we can uh, like go to this one and keep these sorted okay so these are sorted then when i go to this one what i want to do is i want to find everything uh, like i want to Uh, if it is like zero 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 one 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 two three five six something like this. Uh, wait a second. Can we can we uh, take? Okay, impossible is also there. Okay. So what we will do is to find the wasted space. We will find this element uh, in this array. So we can find the last occurrence. that will be somewhere here and then we want uh, to put all of these into this box so to do, so to do that we can uh, like take the sum of all this that is 6 uh, sorry 3 yeah sum of all this is 3 and we can uh, take this uh, 6 times 1 minus 3 because we are just doing 1 minus this 1 minus this One minus this, 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 and so on. So six times one minus whatever the sum here is. For example, if we had to take two, then it would be this thing. Again, we would do two times one minus two. So size times frequency minus the Mm, what should be here? Sum. Okay, so that's what you want. Right. So is everything sorted? I think I think it's not. So we will have to sort everything. But anyway, this is packages dot side. This is boxes dot side. We have a single solution that will work for everything. Now it was called the composition. Okay, uh, so now we want to sort the uh, packages. Uh, right so now we want to sort the packages and then what we will do is we will sort all the boxes also so for int i equals 0 i is smaller than m i plus plus we want to sort boxes i okay so uh, so we have sorted all the packages all the boxes okay so i think here we need a prefix sum because we want to get this sum quickly so we need the prefix sum okay vector int p sum and plus 1 For int i equals one, i is more or equal to n i plus plus. The p sum of i plus equals p sum of i minus one 
plus the packages i minus one. Okay. So this way we have the prefix sum now. Uh, we can quickly get the sum in any range. So let's make a lambda function for that. Auto sum equals Like if you want the sum in the range L comma R, it would be just return you no know, autocomplete return P sum R plus one minus P sum L. Right. So this will give us the sum in the range L comma R. Let me see if there's any compile error here. Where? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Any problem after this? Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, iterate on all these. Okay. For auto and i is smaller than m i plus plus. Okay. So we are at the Supplier, supplier i, okay, and okay. So if the last package of uh, if, if the last size of this is uh, like bigger than that, wait a second. Oh, sorry, yeah, this should be long, long. Otherwise, uh, it will just. Um, hmm. okay. Yeah, I think auto will manage. Okay. okay. Yeah, it is already long, long. So that doesn't matter. So what was I saying? Uh, right. I forgot. Yeah, so. Uh, we need the answer in also long 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 answer okay of course minus one i think or instead of minus one we can have something very big so let's have one ten to power eighteen okay now if answer is like greater than 10 to power 16 or something, then we will just say answer equal minus 1. Otherwise, we will say answer equals answer mod 10 to power 9 plus 7. Okay. Okay. And uh, right. So I think if this uh, like if the last if the last box of this so last like biggest is like uh, what boxes i dot bag has to be non empty, right? So if this biggest box is uh, smaller than the biggest box in present uh, in the packages, so if like if biggest is smaller than the um, packages dot back, then obviously there is no chance here, and we'll just continue. Right? So this this means impossible. Okay, so now if it is possible, then what we want to do is we want to iterate to uh, that thing. Uh, I forgot. We want to iterate through the boxes like this. So for in x in the or in x in the boxes i. Okay. So we want to iterate through the boxes and we want to find the element that is just bigger than this thing. We want to find this position here in the packages. 
so this would be like the upper bound of x so upper bound okay that's how we write it right is it just upper bound or there's an underscore i think there's an underscore okay. upper bound mm -hmm. all of the packages comma this value x i think okay so this will give us i think uh, this this index so we will get this index okay what do we do now we want the sum from the beginning to this index minus 1 till here First of all, let's subtract packages at begin. Okay. And I think we need to also subtract one here. Int position something. Right, so we subtract one here, so we actually reach here. Then we want the sum of all these elements. So uh, sum will be like we also we already have this lambda function. From the last pointer, we can keep a last like this last. I don't know if should if this should be zero or minus one. But yeah, so from last till here, we want the sum. Okay. Right, so from last till here, you want the sum. And one more thing, if r is greater than l, then we return 0 l. Sorry, if r is smaller than l, then because there are no elements in the range. So this will make sure when, when, like, uh, when the position is minus 1, it returns the uh, 0. Okay. So from last till the position okay right so this is the sum and this should also be long long then we can say something like last equals position plus one because like we have already taken till this point right so from now we will take from this point onwards position plus one uh, we have already taken up till this point now we will take from here onwards that's why we put the last here right so we have found the value and now what we want to do is we want to actually have a temp in which we store the total number of moves that were taken here. So this will be like uh, temp plus equals frequency times x frequency times x minus the value. So what is the frequency? So we need to store the frequency now. And this one is simple, I think. Frequency would just be um, hmm. the frequency would just be I think position minus last plus one. Because like if last and position are the same, that means there's one element. So yeah, so I think that's it. And we have the temp now. So that, that is the temporary answer for this supplier and what we want to do is we want to say answer equals the minimum of answer comma the temp and this should work. Run time error. Oh wow.
Uh, hmm. They won't show it during the contest, right? I think somewhere what I'm doing is I am not taking you know, it in long long where I should. Okay, so this is all long long, this is long long. Yeah, everything is long long here, everything is long long here. Okay, I think frequency into X is not long long. Uh, okay. Yay, done. Oh wow, this one minute was left. Wow. Okay. I think I've already done the explanations. There's not much I could do now. But uh, can we actually go through them again? Maybe just the last problem. Mm. Right. So I, I think it was clear. Like uh, I already explained while solving. And so yeah, that's that. Uh, all the problems and the contest is also over. So I'll just go and upload this video. And thank you for watching. So. Uh, do subscribe if you want to watch more content like this and do check out my other content as well.